I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. We're co-presidents of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this show. We'll be speaking with Representative Jared Huffman about a new congressional report highlighting Speaker Mike Johnson's Christian nationalist views. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces Free Thought Matters, is the nation's largest association of free thinkers, that's atheists, agnostics, and other non-believers. We invite you to join us in our vital work to keep our secular government free from religious influence. Become a member at ffrf.org or ask for a complimentary copy of our newspaper, Free Thought Today. Freedom depends on free thinkers. Watch prior episodes of Free Thought Matters on FFRF's YouTube channel. Are the Christian nationalist views of the new Speaker of the House cause for concern? We're delighted to have today Representative Jared Huffman on our show to answer that question. Congressman Huffman represents California's 2nd District. He is co-founder and co-chair of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, which now numbers 20 members, and which works to protect the secular character of government. The members include Christians, Jews, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, other believers, and non-theists, like Representative Huffman. In January, the Congressional Free Thought Caucus released an important report highlighting the Christian nationalist views of the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, a man now only two heartbeats away from the presidency. Representative Huffman, thank you for overseeing this significant report, and welcome back to Free Thought Matters. Well, thanks for having me. It's good to be back with both of you. Good to talk to you again. So, Representative Huffman, you've been quoted as saying that the Trump presidency was like rocket fuel for Christian nationalism. What's the difference between people with Christian beliefs and those with Christian nationalist beliefs? Well, it's, it's a big difference. Uh, people with Christian beliefs uh, can celebrate their religion uh, in any way they want in this country. It's one of the things that makes us great. But when they start trying to say that this is a Christian nation, that it was founded as a Christian nation, or when they start trying to institutionalize Christianity as a national religion, impose it on others, that's when we cross the lines uh, that should be off limits in a secular democracy. And there is reason for concern that Speaker Mike Johnson would do that. He's pretty much spent his whole career trying to do it. So what prompted the Congressional Free Thought Caucus to research and release this report? We wanted to just have a conversation with Mike Johnson about this. You know, he likes to say that he's for religious freedom. Uh, it seems like he defines it pretty differently than most of us. But either way, you mentioned at the top that the Free Thought Caucus looks a lot like America, religiously, demographically. We are not a monolith of Christians like his Republican caucus. We've got just about everything in the Free Thought Caucus. And what better place to have a, an honest, free-ranging conversation about religious freedom? Uh, we, are, we should be the place he wants to engage with. So we invited him in good faith to just sit down and talk through these issues with us. Uh, he declined. And so we had to do our own investigation uh, so we could begin to get answers to our questions. And that's what this 14-page white paper is all about. Seems like the main job of the House of Representatives is to represent, and the country is diverse in its religious views and other views. And this report that your caucus issued, uh, let's quote from some of the very strong words in the findings. You wrote, Speaker Johnson is deeply connected in political practice and philosophy to Christian nationalism, more so than any other speaker in American history. He has spent decades working to deny, reject, and undermine the constitutional separation of church and state, including 
trafficking in fake histories about our nation's founding, and distorting the meaning of the Establishment Clause. He has a long record of opposing and undermining civil rights and liberties in the name of religion. And he has collaborated closely with hate groups and Christian nationalist extremists to advance a theocratic agenda by transforming our pluralist constitutional republic into a biblically sanctioned government. So those are very strong words. And how did you come to those conclusions? Well, you can't really avoid those conclusions if you take a look at what Speaker Johnson has done throughout his career. Uh, as an attorney representing some of these organizations, including designated hate groups, in their agenda to impose biblical codes, you know, broadly on society, um, his obsession with these biblical code-driven policies that he wants to implement. I mean, he's obsessed with banning abortion, of course. Uh, he's obsessed with homosexuality, which he regards as a sin that is going to bring, you know, broad societal wrath from God on all of us. And, you know, if he wants to have these extreme beliefs in his personal life, that's one thing. If he wants to be a lawyer and, and advocate for these things, you know, he can do that too. But when you step into the role of being a legislator, and certainly as the Speaker of the House, second in line to the presidency, um, it's not okay to advance these types of agendas because they are fundamentally at odds with who we are as a country and the constitutional sideboards, sideboards we have. So we do have some clips of um, the Speaker of the House making some of these comments. But before we go to them, did you have any other uh, comments you wanted to make about the general findings of the investigation into Johnson's views. You mentioned that they're strong words, and they are, but there is no hyperbole uh, or overreach in this report. It is, we've got the receipts, it's all documented, and most of it comes from Speaker Johnson's own words. So I hope people will take a look. I, I think we need to be very clear-eyed about who is second in line to the presidency at this moment in time. You know, we're a country that's being torn apart by Christian nationalism, among other things. Uh, and to have one of their own, one of their champions, uh, this close to the presidency and in the highest position in the House of Representatives is a place we've never been before. Well, to show that there really is no hyperbole, let's listen to House Speaker Mike Johnson in his own words. This statement was made on the House floor in April 2023, before he was voted Speaker of the House. Certainly there's a move to keep religion out of politics and, and to rigidly enforce the so-called separation of church and state. What's your reaction right there, Representative Huffman, to the so-called separation of state? It's not a so-called separation of church and state. I mean, let's, let's start with that. But Mike Johnson has said things like this throughout his career. Uh, and look, he, is closely aligned with organizations that openly attack separation church and, and state. They say it's not a thing, that um, our founders never intended it to separate religion from government. Uh, and some of them, you know, who may acknowledge that it is embedded in the Constitution, openly want to change that. So um, separation of church and state is a critical part of our democracy. It's one of America's most unique and important contributions to the world. Uh, and make no mistake, Mike Johnson and these allies he spent his career working with want to tear it down. So in Mike Johnson's first speech after he was elected Speaker of the House in October 2023, he made this remark. And some of these voices now are in this chamber arguing that our rights do not come from God. Mm -hmm. how you know, think about how scary that is. If you if you believe your rights come from government, then it means you don't really owe any allegiance at all to God. So do all members of Congress think our rights come from God? Well, this one certainly doesn't. <laughs> uh, look, I think he's offering a, a false binary there. He's saying your choices, your rights either come from God or they come from government. Uh, th that's a misunderstanding of our founding and our Constitution. Our rights come from us. We the people is what it was all about. So it's neither government nor God. It's a new model of uh, governance where we the people get to decide what our rights are and then we empower our government to protect them. 
Yes, and it was a revolutionary thing when that was adopted, and it's all American. So yeah. I hate to see that kind of aspersion. Because other countries were established under some sovereign authority of the god or the monarchy or something, but our country flipped it upside down and said, nope, we the people. This fake history of the founding has been one of the things that Speaker Johnson and, and you know, fake historians like Barton and other folks that he's hung around with for years, they do. They convince people that we are a Christian nation, that we always have been, that we should be. And the scary part of this is if you look at the latest public opinion polling, a lot of Americans have bought into this, uh, and it's dangerous. It's a big lie, and it has been repeated over and over again. So he went on in the same month, October 2023, Speaker Johnson was on Fox television. Someone asked me today in the media, they said, it's a curious, people are curious, what does Mike Johnson think about any issue under the sun? I said, well, go pick up a Bible off your shelf and read it. That's, that's my worldview. Any response? <laughs> Talking about a non-answer. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, you could find something in the Bible to support absolutely anything you wanted to say. So for him to just say, see the Bible, uh, is completely non-responsive and tells us nothing about what he actually believes and what he thinks. Because Bible believers pick up that same book and they fall on opposite sides of every single moral issue that we're struggling with in the country. Now, just like the Lincoln Memorial says, yeah, we fought a, a battle over slavery and both sides look to the Bible. Christians are marching for abortion and against abortion, for gay marriage and against it, and you name it, the Bible doesn't seem to offer much practical guidance at all. So to get to the report, it states that Speaker Johnson has often asserted the goal of creating a biblically sanctioned government. Why are you concerned about whether he regards the Bible rather than the Constitution as the supreme rule of the land? I think the fact that someone like Mike Johnson would even use that language should be deeply disturbing and alarming to every American. The idea that the Bible is some kind of a supremacy clause over the supremacy clause of the Constitution of the United States, uh, and we're now going to be governed by the book of Leviticus and uh, Revelations and all of this other stuff that has little or no application in modern society. I mean, it includes stuff about, you know, what, what clothes you're not allowed to wear and how you treat slaves and polygamy. I mean, it's so deeply um, antiquated and, frankly, it, with our modern values, unconscionable if we tried to live in that kind of a biblically sanctioned way. Unconstitutional, un-American, completely unconscionable, really, uh, with our modern society and modern values. And this guy's out there saying it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that you shall have no other God before me. The first commandment is the antithesis of the First Amendment, telling you yeah. our government can't tell you who to believe in. Yeah, it just doesn't work. And so, you know, Mike Johnson needs to be asked a lot of hard questions. That's what we tried to do by inviting him uh, to have a dialogue. And even with this white paper, when we put it together, we included a number of very specific questions that we want to ask Speaker Johnson, that we think the media and everyone else should be asking him. So far, he's unwilling to really answer. Uh, in fact, uh, he's being characterized as the least accessible speaker in modern history. He won't talk to people. Well, we are talking with Representative Jared Huffman, co-chair of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, which just released a report on the Christian nationalist views of House Speaker Mike Johnson. And when we come back, we want to talk about some of those questions that the Congressional Free Thought Caucus would have liked to have asked Mike Johnson. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist. When I first recorded that commercial back in 2014, being openly atheist in America was still fairly uncommon. Today, the fastest growing religious group in the country is the non-religious, especially among the young. That progress is heartening, but the religious pushback is fierce and the forces of Christian nationalism are well organized. Our progress won't continue unless we work together so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. That's why I'm asking you to join the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics working to keep state and church separate, just like our founders intended. Please join the Freedom From Religion Foundation today. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, 
not afraid of burning in hell. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace. Let's restore respect for America's secular roots. Help the Freedom From Religion Foundation defend the wall of separation between state and church. Join us at FFRF.org. Freedom depends on freethinkers. We are speaking with U.S. Representative Jared Huffman, co-founder and co-chair of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, about a recent report by that caucus titled, Speaker Johnson, Christian Nationalism in the Speaker's Office. So Representative Huffman, if it's all right with you, we have that final video clip to play of Speaker Mike Johnson. And this is from December 2023, when Speaker Johnson was the keynote speaker for the annual gala for the National Association of Christian Lawmakers that was held at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. And he, of course, didn't know he was being recorded when he made this statement. The Lord began to wake me up uh, through this three-week process we're in, in the middle of the night, and, and to speak to me and to write things down, plans and, and procedures and ideas on how we could pull the conference together. Now, at the time, I assumed the Lord is going to choose a new Moses, and oh, g th thank you, the Lord, Lord, you're going to allow me to be Aaron to Moses. And so I, I, I worked to get Steve Scalise uh, elected speaker. That didn't happen. And then Jim Jordan, who's like another big brother of mine, no, that didn't happen. And then Tom Emmer, and you know, ultimately 13 people ran for the, for the post. Um, and, and the Lord kept telling me to wait, wait, wait. So I waited, I waited. And then at the end, when it came to the end, the Lord said, now, step forward. Me? I, I'm, I'm supposed to be Aaron. No, the Lord said, step forward. Putting aside the fact that he thinks God's talking to him, he's free to believe that, right? And a lot of people do believe those things. But as a public servant, is he free to use his personal beliefs to affect the religious rights of all Americans? It's something that makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I have a personal background uh, in religion. The first quarter of my life was spent uh, as a devout Christian. And, you know, when people start thinking God is talking to them, quite often um, that can lead to fanaticism, violence, and lots of bad outcomes. So when I hear it from someone who's the Speaker of the House of Representatives, it's, it's disturbing, I'll be honest. The Congressional Free Thought Caucus report maintains that Speaker Johnson owes it to the American people to answer some very specific questions. And one of those questions is whether he supports the Seven Mountain Mandate. And uh, what is that, Representative Huffman? Well, this is this extreme dominionist uh, belief system that certain uh, evangelical Christians subscribe to. And it it's really hard to reconcile with a pluralistic democracy like what our founders set up. When you believe your religion compels you to conquer and dominate all aspects of society, including government, um, that's not democracy. That's not pluralism. It's certainly not secular. Anytime you see someone in government, much less this highly placed in government, pushing a dominionist agenda, that is like a DEFCON poor situation for our democracy. It needs to be taken very seriously. So the seven mountain mandate is asking for like a theocracy then, right? Totally. The I mean, they're not uh. even shy about it, Dan. Uh. Uh, it, it is calling on Christians to take over and dominate the seven mountains of influence in society. Government is one of them, business, media, uh, the family life and religion, others. So, uh, you know, this mandate just by their own words, by what they say they are going to do, is going to eliminate all other religion. Uh, it's going to place Christians in positions of dominance in all of these different aspects of society. It's certainly going to include uh, an authoritarian theocracy, and it ought to be something that alarms Americans in a very serious way. Well, speaking of things that alarm me, uh, the report also asks whether the speaker supports Project 2025, which has been called a democracy doomsday. Can you talk a little bit about Project 2025, Representative Huffman, and some of your concerns? You know, when Donald Trump somehow became president in 2016, I think a lot of these folks, including the new apostolic reformation and 
um, some of the Christian nationalist groups and their allies didn't expect him to win. Uh, it was a sort of dog catches car moment, and it took them months to figure out what to do and how to exercise this newfound power. Uh, what Project 2025 is about uh, is making sure that they hit the ground running if Trump gets a second term in the White House. And their plans are very specific. They should alarm people, uh, not just because they will advance this theocracy agenda that we've been talking about, but um, some of the ways they would do it involve a complete purge of the federal workforce and an imposition of loyalty tests uh, so that you only have MAGA Republicans basically working in the federal government, a, a, an elimination of checks and balances and oversight and safeguards so that a second Trump presidency would basically have a free hand to weaponize the Department of Justice, to do whatever he wants. And, um, you know, no one should be naive about this. Donald Trump is telling us in every way what he will do. His second presidential term, if he gets it, is going to be a retribution tour. He's going to punish his enemies. He's going to lock in extreme executive power. He's going to hand these extreme Christian nationalists everything they want. And Project 2025 is, is not very subtle about it either. Well, it's 900 pages, and there's a lot buried in there. Aside from uh, the undemocratic proposals, uh, a lot against separation of state and church, like um, vouchers, and also banning Miffy Pristone, if that doesn't happen before next year, that kind of thing. So it's very concerning. Everything we, we're talking about this morning, you know, seems to just sound a lot of alarms if you care about democracy, separation of church and state, and just having a, a country that's not a dystopian theocracy. There are a lot of good Christians in this country, and we've had some on our show, good Christians who support gay rights, for example. But your report shows that Mike Johnson is not one of those. He's, he's making gay marriage and divorce and reproductive freedom and all of these issues much more difficult, isn't he? You could not find anyone in Congress with a more extreme record on these issues. Mike Johnson obsesses about um, criminalizing uh, homosexuality. Certainly, he hates uh, marriage equality. He has the most extreme position on abortion that you will find in the Congress or probably anywhere else. And he's one of these folks that um, believes, because of his religion, that the sins of people who get abortions or people who are homosexual are going to bring um, collateral damage on the entire country. Because there are examples in the Bible of this where God punishes entire nations for the sins of a few. And, you know, Mike Johnson has said this in, in many different public statements where he believes we are about to experience collective punishment from God because of these sins. And this is what's driving a public policy agenda that's just so out of step with the rest of this country. He sounds like a televangelist, doesn't he? The Congressional Free Thought Caucus report ended with the conclusion that was uh, concentrating on, on uh, Representative Johnson's threats to democracy. For example, he was an election denier. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Mike Johnson was uh, very much involved in the lead up to the January 6th insurrection. He was sort of the legal mastermind in Congress, working with the Trump administration and Trump lawyers on legal challenges to the election results, particularly in seven states where they were contesting the results. And so, you know, I remember that as, as a colleague, seeing different Republican colleagues of mine being asked to sign on to these legal briefs and lawsuits that Mike Johnson was spearheading. He was the go-to guy driving the big lie. And of course, all of these theories were lies. They were discredited. They lost and were rejected in the courts, you know, in every single instance. Uh, but that, that then carried this forward to the votes that they cast on January 6th, still rejecting the election results from these states. So um, he's about as extreme as it gets. So I have to confess, I've been alarmed in the past about Christian nationalism, but I have never been this alarmed about what we are seeing around the country. Do you share that feeling, Representative Huffman? I do. And that's why, you know, the Free Thought Caucus that I co-founded with Jamie Raskin, we, we were the first in Congress to sound the alarm about Christian nationalism. We did it 
just before the 2020 election, we held a forum with uh, an expert, Catherine Stewart, an investigative journalist who had just written a book called The Power Worshippers about this movement. It was very clear in explaining that this is dangerous, it's violent, it should be regarded as a national security threat. And uh, Congressman Raskin and I were worried about it enough that uh, we turned around and wrote a memo to the incoming Biden administration urging him to consider Christian nationalism a national security threat. Obviously, January 6th then came along and the whole world saw what this movement is all about. It's very violent, it's zeroed in on democracy. And um, yet here we are several years later and the movement is stronger than ever. And they are poised to make themselves available to the next authoritarian leader who wants to use them to advance their agenda. And I'm very worried about it. I think you were the first member to actually mention Christian nationalism from the floor of the House. Isn't that right? Yeah, I was. It, and, you know, it, that shouldn't be taboo. It shouldn't be something that, you know, I'm the only one in Congress talking about on the floor. And, and part of the challenge we face here is historically, and I, I'm sure you folks have had shows on this subject, you know, we've, we pay great cultural and societal deference to Christianity. Christianity has had this dominant role in our country, um, including the theocracies that existed in colonial America, right? Um, and so a lot of people think that if you criticize something that has the word Christian in it, you're being anti-Christian, and this Christian privilege kicks in, and this this deference and this um, reticence to to even call out something violent and bad and un-American really confounds us and makes it hard to confront this threat. And I, I see it all the time. Even colleagues who agree with me on this, um, you know, kind of pull their punches and, and are nervous about talking about it publicly. Well, your report, the Congressional Free Thought Caucus report on um, speakers, the Speaker of the House's Christian nationalism is such an important contribution. And thank you so much for joining us today, Representative Huffman. Thanks for having me. And just one last thought, it is not anti-Christian to call out the violence and the danger and the threat of Christian nationalism. So thanks for giving me a chance to have that conversation with you. Hear, hear. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters.